Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up today I'm looking at a brand new steam locomotive from Dapol. As you've probably heard, there are currently two double-O gauge manor locomotives in development. One of them from Acura Scale and the other one from Dapol. And for some strange reason, these two models are being developed simultaneously. However, at long last, the first of these models has finally been released. It was the first to be announced, and as you can see here, it is also the first to be released. And this is, of course, the Dapol Mana class. And let me tell you, I've already seen a few listing, product listing images for this model, and they look absolutely superb. Which is quite surprising because, at least comparatively speaking, these are not very expensive models. The RRP is £159.95, which is considerably cheaper than the Mana that Acura Scale have announced. Yet, of course, retailers do discount Dapol products to the point where I bought this one from Hattons for just £140.72 which is astonishing really these days. It's not at all uncommon to purchase a locomotive of this or smaller size for 200 pounds or more. You know, we've seen that quite a lot already this year. And here we've got a new locomotive from Dapol for 140. Sounds like a cracking deal. And if you'd like to check those out, I will include some affiliate links down in the description for you. But my question is, what sort of locomotive is this going to be? Is it going to be up to Dapol's usual standards? Is it going to look great? Is it going to run well? Well, I really hope so, because if this is a stunning model for 140 quid, then it will just go to show how unreasonable those much more expensively priced locomotives really are. So there's a lot riding on this. Let's take a look at it together, and let's hope that this is the fantastic model that it really deserves to be. So as you can tell, this is Dapol's standard kind of packaging in this very sturdy box, which I always like. And in terms of the models themselves, there's quite a lot of choice here for you. Dapol have produced several different examples of the MANA locomotive in a good selection of different liveries, which is awesome. And of course, you can get these models analog, DCC fitted or DCC sound fitted. So an awful lot of choice for you. What I've got here, though, let me show you the end of the box, is 4S-001-001. It is Torquay Manor. I love Torquay, that's why I went for this one. And it's number 7800 in the Great Western Green with Roundel. And as you can see, the minimum recommended radius is R2. And as you know, my layout does not have anything tighter than that, so this model should be fine. There's not much else to see on the box besides that, so I think for the first time I'm ready to open the lid and see what sort of model this is. So here we go. Really, really been looking forward to this uh, because Dapol really do show what they can do when they release a new steam locomotive, or at least they did with the Mogul and the Large Prairie, both very impressive Great Western locos. So I'm hoping this will be the same. Right, so we've got the Great Western 7800 or Manor locomotive owner's manual. Let's take a look. This ought to give us some info on the model. Uh, so there you go, history of the manor. If you'd like to pause and read that, you can do. I like the specifications. So die-cast chassis, die-cast wheels, sprung centre driving wheels. Let's see if there's anything more impressive here. Sprung buffers, yeah. Pickup from driving and tender wheels, bearings, that's great. Die-cast footplate, that is a real quality feature, particularly at this price point. And firebox flicker effect. So yeah, we do have LEDs in the firebox here. So as you can tell already, this seems like it's going to be quite a high spec model. Maintenance, yeah, this is just such a well-produced buckler. Look at this. It seems as though it still has Dapol's toolless DCC fitting solution, whereby you just pop the front of the smoke box off and the DCC decoder fits onto a USB drive type thing. Uh, yeah, it's just very, very innovative. Easy to overlook this from Dapol because they always do this, but... It is quite a bit more advanced than what we see from other manufacturers, even though those other manufacturers do tend to be much more expensive, like I say. Yeah, but look at this. Look how extensive this is. Uh, this is just what I love about Dapol. Look at all these diagrams with all the parts all listed, all described. Oh, yeah. Gets me going, I tell you. <laughs> 
<clears throat> yeah, I'm not sure where I'm going with that. Uh, but yeah, seriously, it's very well produced, seems concise, seems to give you all the information you need. So that is great. Okay, are you ready? Big reveal time. I'll look at the quality of the packaging as well. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Okay, so the manor is somewhere in there. Let's pull this out and let's take a look at it. Uh, have we got any accessories here? Yes, there is a small accessories bag. Doesn't seem to be a lot in there though, which uh, I think is quite good because it means obviously the bulk of the detail is already fitted to the model. We've got the first bag here. Looks like we've got a speaker enclosure, a vacuum pipe of some description. We've got the tool which removes the smoke box door and helps you pull out the DCC socket drawer type thing. And there's uh, one or two other little detail bits in there. And there's a second bag here, which, oh yeah, oh, look at this folks, 140 quid. And we've got optional etched number plates. <laughs> yeah, seen a lot of more expensive models than this, which do not include this feature. That is a really, really decent optional extra, that. Right, impressive as that is, I really want to see the loco now. So are you ready? Let's open up the box and let's take our first look here we go it's very well packaged but oh do you know what yeah this thing looks epic look at that electroplated bonnet on the top there that just looks insane and quite clearly even as a slightly cheaper model than we're used to the finish on the boiler there is excellent that's something dap will do really well in fact the smoke box has got a great shine to it oh yeah this is wonderful Loco and Tender don't appear to be coupled in the packaging, and I think this is going to have the same coupling solution whereby you just snap the two together and it's dead easy. It actually works too, which is something. So let's pull out the Tender first. First impressions of the Tender, it's quite a heavy thing. Yeah, there's a fair bit of heft to this. It's got these great looking metal wheels, which I like very much, and apparently they do have pickups on them. Yeah, it looks like a very well detailed and very well decorated Tender take a closer look at this in just a second of course but i'll pop that back down for now oh let's take a look at this loco then which also seems to have a fairly good weight to it but never mind the weights just look at this thing yeah cool so it just looks absolutely pristine doesn't it the level of detail is quite noticeable i think uh, the quality of the model is there as well right from the start the die cast running plate feels quality it feels sturdy not feeling details flexing under my fingers and that's not to mention how absolutely awesome this model looks yeah it's very very aesthetically pleasing isn't it all right let me hold the tender next to the loco then there we go so you get a bit of the full effect there yeah it's it's a beauty isn't it at the moment for 140 quid I'm quite astounded by what Dapple have been able to produce here. It's looking very, very good, isn't it? But how does it fare up close? Well, we're going to find out in just a second. But first of all, here's a bit of background on the Mana class in real life. The GWR Mana class, or the Great Western Railway 7800 class, was a fleet of 30 460 tender locomotives introduced between 1938 and 1939. The Manor was effectively a lighter version of the previous Grange class, which granted them much wider route availability, which allowed them to traverse more of the railway network where heavier locomotives were forbidden. The class also shared many parts with the Great Western 4300 moguls, which is quite fitting as Dapol have also produced this model, even though the Grange locomotives on which the Manors were based performed outstandingly, the Manors were actually extremely disappointing to begin with, although a number of improvements helped to mitigate this issue. Withdrawal eventually took place between 1963 and 1965, with 21 examples being scrapped, but a fantastic 9 remaining in preservation, which is quite good going I think. So there it is up close and personal for you, the brand new Dapple Manor class. And I'm absolutely astounded by this thing. It really is gorgeous, isn't it? For the money, or even in fact ignoring the money, this is an awesome model in its own right. First of all though, let's briefly talk about connecting the loco and tender together. This is the process. <laughs> that is it so loco and tender are now coupled together with an electrical connection what an absolutely awesome solution that is 
Again, I've talked about this before and it's easy to take this for granted with Dapol, but again, this is such a good solution. And that drawbar can withstand at least two newtons of force before coming apart, I tested that, and that is realistically much more than the Loco could ever produce. So unless you really violently accelerate the Loco or something, that drawbar is never going to come uncoupled and there's plenty of redundancy there. But let's talk about the Loco itself because every aspect of this is super impressive and as far as I can see, the Loco looks spotless. In terms of weight, it comes in at 351 grams, Loco and Tender, which is the same as the Hornby 2800 class, which was a very heavy freight Loco. And of course, the weight is decent here because of the die-cast running plate. Good chunky metal piece, that, which is, again, very good quality. And that's also significantly heavier than the Mogul was. But for me, the most impressive thing about this model is the finish. Just look at the shine on the boiler there. For me, the perfect finish is achieved by getting the right balance between matte and gloss. And I really think that it's Dapol that gets this balance right, quite consistently. Yeah, it's just really lovely, isn't it? I can't get over it, in fact. The amount of realism that a decent finish can actually bring to a model is quite mind-blowing. Now, clearly, there isn't an awful lot of decoration on my example in terms of lining and such, although some of the Dapol manners do have quite a bit of that. But even so, the decoration that is here is absolutely fantastic. So the side of the cab, for instance, a little bit of lining going on there. You've also got a tampo printed version of the number plate, which looks absolutely fine. Route availability there up on top is blue, as you can see. Nice lining around the window frames there too. The Torquay Manor nameplate is actually made of metal. Yeah, I believe that is an etched piece. And the quality of the paint on there as well is second to none. The splashes are nicely lined, as you can see, and I think my favourite part of the decoration has to be the safety valve bonnet there. Electroplated, very, very realistic brassy finish. Absolutely love that. The chimney top kind of contrasts a bit with that because clearly that is just a plastic piece that has been painted. I guess this is just a creative decision that Dapol made because obviously that has allowed a bit more detail on the top of the piece there. But as you can see, the quality of the paint there isn't the greatest, unfortunately. It's not terribly distracting or anything, but it's noticeably quite a bit less realistic than, let's say, a proper copper chimney would be. Similarly, I think the whistles here are probably just made of plastic, but clearly the definition here is absolutely outstanding, and so actually those look really quite good. The die-cast running plate has this gorgeous, gorgeous metal finish to it, as well as loads of riveting, as you can see. Separately fitted lamp irons on the front there. The front buffer beam is really nicely painted. It's got the coupling hook pre-fitted. No couplings to go on those hooks, unfortunately, which I think is a pity, but certainly not a major complaint at this price. Vacuum pipe and separately fitted metal sprung buffers. I do love that feature. It's very good to see. Buffer a little bit wonky, perhaps. Is it just me? No, it does look like it's facing upwards a little bit. So definitely a slight lapse in quality just here and there. There isn't an awful lot of detail between the frames of this model underneath the boiler and such. However, there is a bit of representation of valve gear there, which is just enough to catch the eye and bring an extra level of detail to the model. So that is really, really good to see. The wheels, as we saw from the instructions, are die cast. And as a result, the finish on those is excellent as it is everywhere else on the model. The coupling and connecting rods also look great, although I do suspect part of the crosshead here is made of plastic. Again, the finish on this is so good that it doesn't matter too much, although I do feel that metal parts, at least here, do look better as a general rule. In terms of the cylinders, not much decoration on this example, but the cylinder drain cocks have been pre-fitted, as you can see, and those are pre-painted. Don't forget this loco is rated for second radius curves, so the fact that those have been fitted suggests that they won't interfere with the bogey movement and such, which is again good to see. The loco is complete with separately fitted wire handrails, which all look nice and straight, which is good. And then the smoke box door here has the separately fitted smoke box dart, as well as that lamp bracket fitted to it. 
Around the other side, we've got a separately fitted reverser rod, which again is a really nicely molded piece, except it is made of plastic, I believe. Again, though, the finish on it isn't too bad. They have actually managed to make quite a few plastic details look really good. And of course, what they're made of doesn't really matter, does it? As long as the finish is good, the weight is okay, and the model is relatively sturdy, I don't really mind too much. And Dapol have definitely ticked all of those boxes for me. The cab looks good, yeah, we've got nice lining around the windows, which are fully glazed. And then inside the cab, there is a great amount of detail, including fully painted gauges, separately fitted and separately painted reverser and regulator. Water gauges look good. All of the pipework is separately painted. And of course, this also has the flickering firebox effect, which hopefully we'll see later on when I give this Loco some power. The tender is again very, very effective. It looks like quite a simple model, but up close the level of detail is definitely there. For instance, the underframe is very impressive. It's got all of the brake rigging pre-fitted. The Loco did as well, by the way. There is the separately fitted water scoop, which looks like a very finely molded piece. The finish and decoration on the tender looks fantastic. You've got the little Great Western logo there, which looks just absolutely fine. The coal load is also very impressive. Look at the detail in the load there. Just small things like that have really impressed me here. Yeah, it looks, it looks very, very realistic, does that. And it's also removable, so even if it wasn't your cup of tea, which I think is quite unlikely, really, uh, you could replace it with something else. The controls are separately painted, as you can see, and obviously separately fitted. The tender handrails, though, are quite clearly made of plastic, and I think that shows, doesn't it? Not quite as effective as the separately fitted metal ones, and there's a slight bowing to the plastic ones as well. Fair enough, I suppose, because this is quite inexpensive, but at the end of the day, metal just would have been better here. Around the back, you've got more decoration. Look at that the print on there. It's very good quality. Loads of detail around the buffer beams, more separately fitted lamp brackets, sprung buffers, and then you've got the kinematic coupling on the back, which has a very, very smooth motion to it. It returns to the center without any issues, moves incredibly easily, which is also fantastic. So, I mean, you've seen this Loco up close, you've seen the quality of the finish, you've seen the quality of the assembly, the level of detail is high, and yet all of this comes in at such a reasonable price, in my opinion. Yes, there are one or two very minor things that perhaps could have been done very slightly better, but for what this cost, it is close enough to perfection for me, at least visually. I really want to know what sort of mechanism this Loco is sporting, I want to know how it runs. If this is a perfect performer, or near perfect, then this is going to go down as one of my all-time favourite models. Ha, ah, there's a lot riding on this then. Let's go and take a look. So there she is, Dapol's objectively beautiful Mana class down onto the track, and I've already filmed the initial performance test that is in the can, and I will show you that in just a second. Next, I went on and did my analysis on the mechanism, and that's what I'm going to talk about now. The good news is the mechanism is pretty darn good. In fact, for me, it ticks every single box. The front bogey is a good design. As you can see, it is sprung and there's a great range of movement on it. That means it's going to stay on the track, but it's actually not taking any of the Loco's weight. As you can see, I can lift it up here without lifting the Loco up off the track, which means if you've got gradients or unsmooth track, the pulling power is not going to be diminished by the bogey taking too much weight on the start of inclines or something, so that's great. The tender wheels all have pickups on them. This works by means of some conductive strips which touch the flanges of the wheels. Quite a small contact area, but it uh, seems like quite a good idea, no major problem with that. In order to see the Loco's pickups, we are going to have to remove the base keeper plate. And to do this, you have to remove the brake rigging, which is reasonably easily done, and then six screws. And then of course the base comes away. The pickups actually stay in place and I guess to access these for cleaning, the best thing would be to pull the wheels out. Yeah, it's not that handy, but it's doable and it's not a massive faff, so that's fine. You can see that the driving axles have proper bearings fitted to them. That's a really good touch. And it is the rear axle that is driven via this gear. So it's not an overcomplicated mechanism, just one axle driven, that's fine. DCC fitting, as usual with Dapol these days, is a bit of a joy. You just spudge off the front of the smoke box door with the tool provided. You pull out the little drawer circuit board thing, 
again using the tool provided, and then you can fit the DCC decoder onto that board, put it all back in, and that's it. No need to open up the loco, no disassembly of the tender needed. In fact, there's never any reason to actually remove the loco's body if you don't want to, but I'm gonna do that because I want to show you the chassis, and it's a great design. Look at this chassis, die cast as well, I believe. Very, very nicely put together. The motor does look to be the same motor as we've seen in other DAPO locos, and I'll be honest, I'm not that keen on it. Uh, I don't find it to be a particularly powerful motor, and I get the feeling that it's not that much of a long-lasting motor either. In the D-Class, for instance, which I suspect uses the same motor, the performance of that model actually degraded significantly over time, and now it's very slow and it doesn't have much torque. So we'll just have to see how this one goes. There is a flywheel here, though. Um, again, that can be detrimental with weaker motors where there's not that much torque to spare, but it is good to see a flywheel there. That should produce some smooth performance, at least. We have some LEDs at the back to shine through the firebox door, of course, and these are pointing upwards, not directly out of the firebox door, so that should reduce the intensity a little bit. And then finally, in terms of the gauge, uh, these came in at 14.3 to 14.4 millimeters back to back, which is, of course, very, very close to the standard. So as you can see, the mechanism pretty much gets full marks there. Really good quality, very serviceable, very accessible, and also incredibly well designed. Top of the industry stuff, really, if we're being honest. Okay, so that's good. Let's move on then and talk about performance. Here's the first performance test. Moment of truth then. Does the Dapple Manor work? And does it work well? I'm really hoping that this is going to be a decent performer because I really like this model and I would hate to have to sit here and say, actually, yeah, it's not that much of a great performer. So come on, Dapple, let's hope this is a good one. Forwards direction, let's find out whether the model works. Here we go. All right, so that's 50%. Uh, first impression seems quite sluggish. That's at half power right there. Now this loco has not been running yet and for some reason DAPO locos do seem to improve more than other manufacturers models after a period of running in. So we'll see how that transpires. But at the moment, yeah, it does seem to be almost a little bit labored. I guess a good question would be, what is the torque like? Let's have a look at that. You ready? So we'll go for 50% speed. Yeah, not very good. No, well, I mean, it's turning its wheels. But yeah, you can see that it's it's not a powerful loco. Whether that changes during running in or not is yet to be seen, but at the moment, not outstanding. Uh, let's do another 50% run by. All right, so yeah, this doesn't seem bad. It does not seem bad. Uh, what is the firebox flicker like? Let's have a quick look. Quite good. Yeah, I mean, clearly we're not getting direct LEDs shining right at us, which I think is good. It's reflecting off some sort of backplate, uh, which, yeah, looks absolutely fine. The flickering effect is quite pleasing. And note that it is working on analog. Uh, some flickering fireboxes only flicker on DCC, but not this one. This one is working on analog, which is great to see. Right, big question then, straight out of the box without running in, what is the crawl like? Well, let's see. I am expecting decent performance here. So here we go. I'm just turning it up slowly. And that is a good crawl. <laughs> I wasn't sure if it was going to be because it was quite laboured, but that is legitimately a very good crawl. So as long as there are no torque issues, once this gets hooked up to some rolling stock, as long as it doesn't slow down dramatically around curves, then the slight slowness of its speed is not going to be a massive deal breaker for me. And look at this. I mean, it's quite smooth, isn't it? Even at the sort of medium low speeds. It's quite impressive. Yeah, the performance is not bad. I do think we've seen better, and I'll be surprised if this is a, you know, a perfect performer after running in, but it certainly isn't too bad. Um, I seem to remember the Mogul being a little bit better. In fact, the Mogul was quite lively, if anything, wasn't it? Uh, this doesn't seem to be quite like that at the moment, but yeah, you can't go wrong with that. Look at that. It's pretty smooth. To say this is its first ever run, that's not bad. 
Yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. Look at that. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. It does. I think it definitely needs a run in. So let's do that now. 50% uh, speed. Let's see how it gets on around the layout. Yeah, it's definitely it's definitely taking it steady, but I think maybe even already it's a little bit faster. Is it going to slow down? Yeah. Mm, yeah, on that first of the second radius curves it did. I didn't really notice it do that on the second curve. So, yeah, it, I'm going to stick with the story that it does seem to be a little bit laboured, but at the moment it doesn't seem like it's too bad. It might be much better after it runs in, but equally it might be like the Terrier and the D-Class, which actually, in my experience, got worse over time. Uh, my D-Class is now very slow and laboured. Uh, my Terrier currently doesn't work at all, although that's probably not the motor. There's something shorting in there. I need to figure out what it is. But regardless of all of that, we need to let this manor run in. It does look great as it runs along, I have to say. It's a beautiful model. It does seem to be quite smooth. I don't have a massive problem with the slightly slow speed, as long as that's the way it's supposed to be, and as long as that's not a result of some sort of torque issue or weakness in the motor. So, yeah, we'll see how this gets on. I'll keep it running in, and I'll see you in just a second. There we go, that is running in complete. And I'm not convinced that it's much faster now, but I am thinking that some of the slow speed that we've seen um, is because of the way the Loco has been geared, because even at the sort of maximum speeds, it's not that fast. So I do get the feeling that this is intentional. Um, it doesn't really explain why the torque isn't fantastic. Again, let's see how that is now running in complete. Um, but it's certainly better than it was. I mean, it's not slowing down as dramatically. And certainly around the second radius curves, the slowdowns are not as noticeable as they were. They're still happening, but running in definitely seems to have improved this model, which is great. How is the crawl now? Let's have another look at that. It was very, very good before, and it still is now. Sometimes when you run in a loco, uh, the crawl is less good. But uh, that doesn't seem to be the case here. It seems pretty good and smooth at all speeds if I accelerate it. I mean, that is just delicious, isn't it? I could just consume this locomotive in its entirety. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It is pretty good. The pulling power is, I would say, acceptable, if not outstanding. Um, this was 0.33 newtons or 21 coaches on straight and level track. Yeah, that's not amazing. The Dapol Large Prairie was actually more powerful than that, but I think it should be enough to haul a decent number of coaches or whatnot. And with that in mind, I've set up just six coaches here. I think that ought to be a good demonstration of this Loco's power. Hopefully she won't slow down too much with those coupled. So let's go and have a go. Let's see if I can attempt a really gentle coupling. I think that should be possible. Slight issue with the centre axle on the tender. I notice that that occasionally um, sort of locks up and stops moving, which is a pity. But um, at the higher speeds, I guess it does go OK. So that's fair enough. Right, did they couple correctly? Let's have a look. Yeah, seems fine. And let's go back to 50% and see how this gets on up Gordon's Hill. On the other lines, I've got some of Dapol's other Great Western creations, of which there are quite a few, actually. Yeah, they've served the Great Western community quite well, haven't they? Would be really cool to see them turn their head to some of the other big four companies, I guess. A few LMS locos from Dapol, that would be really cool to see. Anyway, this is the Large Prairie. I think, again, the same motor is in this one, but it does seem to perform better. Um, it's less sluggish, at least. Yeah, it just seems... Seems a bit speedier, and I do quite like that, I have to say. And then on the inside line, we have the Mogul, which I've talked about. And again, I think lively is the word I would use, because I don't think speedier is necessarily better, because, well, it's just not true. But this is definitely a livelier loco. It seems more responsive on the controller, and there's, there's certainly more torque there. But, yeah, that's not really to take away from the good performance that the Manor delivers, because it is good. Right, let's see how this gets on with some coaches then. Keep an eye out for slowdowns. Six coaches. Yep, 
it is detectable I think isn't it but it's not too bad how does it get on up the slight incline here mm. yeah again noticeably slowing down and you know my track isn't the greatest that is true but these reviews are comparative and by that I mean other locomotives of this sort of size do tend to have more torque than this. For you, this might not be a problem at all. If you chip your loco with DCC and your layout is perfectly flat, then the torque issues will probably never be issues for you. I'm just pointing it out as something I've observed. Generally though, I really think Dapol have knocked it out of the park with this one. It's a great looking locomotive with some really excellent and innovative features as usual from Dapol. It performs well, uh, we've seen better performers certainly, but I would easily call this a good runner. And on top of all of that, it has a very, very reasonable price tag. You can't go wrong, can you? You cannot go wrong. And I think it's gonna be very, very difficult for Acura Scale to top this because there's not really that much room for improvement, is there? At least not given how much more expensive Acura Scale's model is going to be. I think the one area for improvement that a Cura scale might be able to latch onto would be the pulling power and the torque of their model. Because I do know that there's going to be more metal on the Acura scale version. Yeah, I think even the boiler might be die cast. So that is a good justification for the slightly higher price. But obviously it's going to need a mechanism to go with it. A heavy loco demands a pretty heavy duty chassis with a pretty high torque motor. And I think that is what Acura Scale really are going to have to deliver in order for their manor to compete against Dapols effectively. I do know their manor is only going to have a three pole motor, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, three pole motors can run extremely well, and this one is certainly going to have to if it's going to compete with Dapol. Time for my ratings then on Dapol's brand new Great Western Manor. And I genuinely think that this loco deserves the high score that I've given it here. So let's break this down briefly. Level of detail for me has to be five star. The quality of the decoration, the great satin finish, the intricately detailed cab, the working lights inside the firebox, the level of detail, everything like that, absolutely incredible. Can't fault it. I mean, the only thing that would have been nice would have been extra couplings to put on the coupling hooks, but I don't think that's enough to knock it down from five star. Even the inclusion of etched metal number plates is absolutely awesome here for what you pay. Yeah, definitely a five. The performance is actually much better than I feared it was going to be. Besides the slight issue with the torque, the performance is actually really good. It's a quiet, smooth runner, doesn't jerk around too much, it can crawl really quite well, and the flywheel ensures that there is an absolute minimum of cogging here. So performance, definitely top notch. Pulling power isn't absolutely amazing. It pulls 21 coaches on straight and level track, or 0.33 newtons of pulling force. We have seen better, in fact that is quite a bit less than the Dapol Prairie, but as you've seen in the review, it's perfectly adequate for hauling a decent number of coaches, although the slight issues in torque will mean that gradients are quite a challenge for this one, but certainly not bad. The mechanism for me, again, gets five star. There's no real way to fault this. DCC access, fantastic, thanks to that toolless system that Dapol have come up with. Loco to tender drawbar is very good and subtle, easy to connect and disconnect, very reliable connection, absolutely amazing. Proper bearings on the driving wheels, single driven axle, not too complicated, five pole motor, flywheel, very serviceable. It's a five star if ever there was one. The quality, again, is really, really good. I was tempted to give this five. I have knocked it down slightly for the plasticky looking chimney, which didn't have great paintwork on it. I think the likes of the large prairie did look better than that. And also some of the plastic handrails, particularly on the tender, they looked a little bit cheap and nasty. I do think metal would have been better. But besides that, it is a good quality loco. The paintwork is very good and precise. It's got a die cast running plate, which brings plenty of weight. The build quality is high, didn't see any glue marks. Overall, it's a very good quality model. And for the first time in a very long time, I am giving this model a five star on value for money. Because at the RRP of £159.95, I think this is a great value model. It's certainly not cheap, I'm not saying it's a cheap model, but for what you pay, you definitely get your money's worth. And for 20 quid less at the retailers, £140.72, that is into bargain territory. 
Dapol have really done Modelers proud here. They've come up with a fantastic model that plenty of people can enjoy because it's affordable. And I really do have to express gratitude and tip my hat to Dapol for that. Great work. Dapol are gonna make themselves very popular if they continue with this sort of thing. And overall, that is a very, very good score. 9.09 .09 out of 10. Great loco, not spoiled by a ridiculously high price. That's the key with this one. Into the logbook, and very deservingly, it is top of the year so far, above the Hatton's Peak class. And I'm very glad to see it there. It's nice to be able to recognize when good work has been done. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that review. That was incredibly, incredibly pleasing. We see a lot of good models on this channel, but rarely do we see good models that also have a reasonable price, and I think this one certainly does. It's a bargain, really. For what I paid, I am incredibly happy, and this has to be one of the best value models I've looked at in an awful long time. So if you want to try one, I have got some affiliate links down in the description. Check it out, see what other liveries Dapol have on offer, and see if you fancy one. Generally speaking, I don't have very many complaints at all about this model. It has ticked near enough all of the boxes for me, and I'm very, very impressed. So well done, Dapol. Keep up the great work. Cannot wait to see what you guys do next. Hopefully it will be something that isn't Great Western, but you know what? I'm not that fussed. If it's of this sort of quality, doesn't really matter what it is, does it? But uh, looking forward to it nevertheless. All right, folks. Well, thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. All right. Cheers, everybody. Take care.